but I try to put my story into why it's so important to save a little bit early in your 20s. Um, let me take you to when I was writing the book. I'm getting done writing the book and mm -hmm. I'm getting to the point where all right, I need to start doing the pre-marketing before I, I publish. Sure. And I worked for an investment company that you know, it's a regulated industry. And so I went to management and said, here's my idea. Uh, it's going to be really cool. I can't wait to do it. Uh, but you need to know from a compliance perspective that I'm doing, I got need to get some level of permission. And they said, Oh, that's going to be complicated for us. That's you can't do that. I hear that a lot <laughs> in your field. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm sitting there. Well, I, I want to do this. So <laughs> I, I don't know that I was really asking for permission. I think I was telling you I was doing this. And right. so my initial reaction was just, Oh, okay. Uh, a few weeks go by and I think to myself, you know, I've been saving since I was in my twenties. I've okay. been investing. I've, you know, I've done all the right things Now's so that I could live life on my terms. I don't know what's next, but I think I want to publish this book without, without anybody. Handcuffs. Yeah. Without having to say to any compliance department, here's what I'm going to do. And so I quit without yeah. knowing what was next. I couldn't have done that if I hadn't saved my money in my twenties and thirties. I love it. I'd have been story. tied to that job. I'd have been stuck. 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 Same business, different day. Good afternoon and welcome back to the Same Business Different Day Podcast. I am your host Zeke Corley and I want to thank you all for tuning in to another wonderful episode of the show. First, I want to give the Same Business Different Day business lesson number 310. Surround yourself with a team that shares your goals along with a personal and professional support system that want to see you accomplish those goals. Seems simple but it's not as always as easy as it sounds. Today's guest, we'll talk a lot about goals a little bit later, but first I just wanted, you know, I'm just happy to have him here with us today. He came referred from a prior guest and his reputation precedes him. His focus on education in his field make him all the more important to talk to on our show. But as usual, we're going to learn about him first and what all his great success is built on. And by the looks of his social media, there's a lot of fun to balance out his personal life. <laughs> JJ Winwick. Winrick. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm excited to talk to you about it, uh, about just the whole passion or the whole life, man, uh, how you got to where you are now, you know, and, and you're clearly passionate about what it is that you do. Um, where'd you grow up? I grew up in a small town in Kansas. Okay. Uh, right outside the city of Wichita. You know, if you don't know Wichita, it's about a half million metro area, so a decent sized city. Okay. But grew up in a town of about 100 people outside of town. It took uh, three towns to make the high school, and there were still only 60 kids in my graduating class. Wow. So, hmm. uh, definitely, you know, the, the quintessential small town uh, Midwest uh, upbringing. Okay. And, and with that kind of an upbringing, did you have like aspirations or, or what were you thinking about that you would do when you grew up? Well, when I was a little kid, I was going to be a professional athlete because okay. when you grow up out in the country and you don't have that many classmates, it's easy to think you might be good at stuff. And then suddenly you get to, to a city and there's a little more people and you realize oh, I'm not, I'm, there's no way I'm going to be a professional you're athlete. You're competing against 59 <laughs> other kids. <Yeah. laughs> oh, I'm actually slow. I have no idea. <laughs> So once, once, you know, once I uh, found myself in the, in reality that that wasn't going to happen, it mm -hmm. was, you know, probably typical stuff that any other kid thinks about, you know, I, I know at one point I wanted to be a doctor at one point I, you know, wanted to be an engineer and, you know, kind of like, uh, with my athletic prowess, I discovered I wasn't very good at math either. And so okay. engineering wasn't going to be a good path. Okay. But, um, one thing I knew is that I didn't want to own a farm. I didn't okay. want to have my mom's upbringing where she grew up on a dairy farm. And I had, you know, I had a lot of friends that were, grew up on farms and 
you know, I'd go visit them and I'm pretty sure their moms and dads said, don't ever let that kid come back. He's going to get himself killed. Mm. So uh, <laughs> I knew it wasn't. Oh, you weren't good at yeah, that either. It's not going to be. Uh, Standing behind all the cows. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Falling off stuff. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, well, I mean, uh, so what about other mentors or, or people who did inspire you uh, a- around you? Yeah, I had wonderful teachers. Okay. I had really good teachers that. Um, talked about careers. They okay. talked about you know current events and the real world. Mm-hmm. And it was um, you just had really good teachers that that helped prepare us for what was life was going to be like. And you know one of those moments was in seventh grade when I had a, um, a teacher that she did a lot of things, but one of them was she entered us in a stock market game. Okay, that um, that was part of uh, Kansas State University, and that was a lot of fun. She brought a stockbroker out to talk to us. Wow. And I thought, you know, that, that's something interesting because I'd always watch the news. I was always into current events and following that. And I'd always see the little, you know, stock update every, you know, every sure. evening and always was curious about it. But my, my mom and dad didn't really know about that sort of thing. And yeah. so, um, yeah, it was, it was just um, good to have that type of exposure because it's, yeah, it's always good. That. Yeah. It's always good to have that kind of exposure. I mean, that, um, but then at the same time, I'm thinking you said you weren't that good at math. <laughs> well, that's the sneaky uh, truth about the markets. <laughs> okay, you <laughs> you're not building a bridge; you're just investing money. <laughs> that's great. You can and counting money, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's great. So, what about uh, early work? How about uh, jobs? Yeah, and this is I, I tell my I have three teenagers, and okay. I tell them about this about it all the time. That I was very fortunate because it was a small town mm-hmm. that the local businesses they needed help, and you knew who the owners were because you you know they. You, they were your neighbors. And so I was able to work for a catering company uh, early. I was probably 13 years old, 12 years old. And, I was, cool. and I was able to work and, um, and make money. And, and it was fun because there were other kids that were working too. And, mm-hmm. uh, and I was always looking for money. I would mow lawns. I'd, I'd do okay. all sorts of things. I, my, my, my son yesterday goes, yeah, well, I can't really go out and mow, mow the lawn, you know, get a lawn mowing job, dad. We don't even have a lawn mower. So <laughs> oh, well, you got to understand how to buy the tools. Yeah. So it's going to pay off in the long run. <laughs> uh, we had um, Christine McDonald on uh, uh, recently and she was talking about buying you know, candy bars uh, with her dad and paying her dad part of it and then just going back to school and selling, you know. Um, but I used to walk around town and mow lawns, like, I think I was charging like $6 a lawn, right? Front and backyard, but just push the lawnmower around town in San Jose. That was, um, you know, it was cash in my pocket, (laughs) you know, never stopped hustling since. Uh, how about education? And I know, um, after, after high school, did you go straight to college? Yep. Went straight to university of Kansas, right out of high school, um, and switched majors multiple times i mean i didn't know what i wanted to be when i grew up uh that's a good lesson i mean that happens right that that happens and and a lot of folks need to understand that you may not know exactly what you're going to be that's why i always ask like what did you did what did you think you wanted to be when you grew up because you know that doesn't always pan out right right? so you switch majors what kind of majors were you did you start with so i came in thinking uh engineering uh computer engineering electrical engineering just because i was into computers at the time Mm -hmm. And another one of those moments where you find out that you get to a big campus and you, you I thought I was good with computers <laughs> and then I'm around all these people that were, no, they were really good with computers. Sure. Sure. Um, and so I, I figured out pretty quickly that I didn't want to go into engineering. Mm-hmm. And then I, I pit stopped in history for about half a semester and realized, okay, wait a minute, I, I'm really interested in this, but I don't know that this is my career path. Mm. Wasn't sure that I wanted to be a teacher. I just not, wasn't sure what direction I was going to go with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I switched to, to economics and eventually I switched the economics to a, a business major just because, um, at the university of Kansas, I felt like that was a better degree and it mm-hmm. was, was going to take more of the courses that I wanted, mm-hmm. but, um, I never did get my, my master's. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I stopped at my undergrad. Okay. Did you, um, feel like you would be leaving Kansas after you graduated? I didn't. I, I, I didn't know we could leave. <laughs> <laughs> I might have done it sooner if I had known, um, but no, I, uh, um, I, I didn't know what I was going to do. I, I thought it was to me when I ended up getting my first job in Kansas City, and that was a big adjustment for me. Mm-hmm. To I mean, that was moving. That I mean, that might, might as well have been moving to New York City. Okay, um, 
because it was a big adjustment just going to Lawrence from the town I grew up in. Mm. Um, a little bit of culture shock, just yeah, being around people. Yeah, and uh, and then Kansas City seemed really big to me as well. Yeah. So, um, now I live in in Southern California. I didn't see that coming at all. You're not, not complaining all. though. Are you? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> North County Daily Star is the leading source for news and community information along the 78 corridor. It's free to subscribe and it is updated daily. Look for us on your mobile device or computer at ncdailystar.com. Ignoring squeals and warning lights on your car is not a good way to lower the cost of owning it. And going without essential business insurance is not a good way to save money in your business. What we know for sure is doing either will cost you more than you will save in the short and the long run. With yourinsuranceplace.com, you can trust the specialists to help maintain your cars and avoid major expenses. Business owners should look to business insurance specialists when it comes to finding competitively priced quality insurance coverage for their businesses. At yourinsuranceplace.com, we specialize in workers' compensation, general and professional liability, employment practices and cyber liability, property owner policies, and bonds for most types of businesses. Yourinsuranceplace.com knows that we can help. If you're uncovered, need to lower the cost of your current insurance, or need better coverage, we can help. Yourinsuranceplace.com has been helping businesses for close to 40 years. If you need a quote on your insurance, call us now at 858-569-8100 or find us at yourinsuranceplace.com. We are business insurance specialists ready to help. The Vista Chamber of Commerce is a proud supporter of the Same Business Different Day podcast. We support our business members with promotion and marketing, business referrals, educational opportunities, workforce development, and advocacy. Check us out online at vistachamber.org. We're going to talk about that job and that professional life with this after this reveal. I just want to uh, introduce you guys to J.J. Winwick. It's, he's a certified financial planner, president and wealth manager at Winwick Health. Wealth. I knew I was going to do that. Winwick Wealth. Financial education advocate. JJ is the author of Teaching Kids to Buy Stocks, Stories and Lessons for Grownups. That's really what, that's one of those exciting things that I want to talk about, this book right here. Um, very cool, man, uh, that you took the time, one, to write a book. It's not easy. You know, everyone says, one day I'm going to write a book, but can you sit down and take the time to do it? But also an important book, too. Um, tell us a little bit about what inspired you or, or kind of that, that professional life as you're getting into, uh, you know, financial planning and then to turn around and say, I need to give this information to the children. No, no, thank you. Yeah, and I, and I do love kind of telling the story of how the, the book came to be. I'm super proud of, of how it came out and, and, and um, you know, the success we've had in helping people take the material from it and, and run with it. And yes. Kind of the, the way it all came about, it, it's, and Dave Baldwin, your guest that, uh, that introduced us, yeah. he's, he's not innocent in this. He might be <laughs> a, a very guilty in this story, but... Um, so in my professional career, so I'd started out right out of college as a financial advisor. I mm -hmm. built up a practice in Kansas, in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. That's how I met my now wife, Jody. Yeah. And we had our own joint practice in Kansas City for about seven years. And then um, after about seven years, I um, started feeling the itch to, to kind of go a different way. Um, was feeling like, all right, I don't know that this is um, what I really want to want to do. I love the markets. I I, mean, I love the markets more than a, than most people should. <laughs> but I I just was a little bit frustrated. I, I wasn't sure what I was feeling, but um, you know, felt like I wanted to talk to other investment professionals, okay. not individuals that might not understand the stuff as much. Mm -hmm. And this will come full circle. I'll, I'll make the, I'll make it all no, come full it. circle I for love you. It. Yeah. And so, so that was really what drove a lot of that is wanting to, to just see what else was out there and, and to challenge myself um, intellectually as well. And so we actually sold that business and you and your wife, my wife and I did, and we started having babies about the same time as that. Okay. So we had three kids in 30 months. Um, and they're definitely part of this story as well. And so I ended up working for a, a, a investment company and my clients ended up being financial advisors. Sure. People that actually are in the role I'm in now, those were my clients wow. and the role I'd had before. 
And so I'm, you know, I'm meeting with all, you know, the best financial advisors in the Western half of the country working for this investment company. And a lot of times they would ask me to speak to their clients. Maybe they're doing a dinner or a presentation and they, a lot of times they'd say, do that thing where you make the market seem simple yeah. where you just relax everybody. You make it all kind of make sense. And, and everybody feels like, oh, I understand how the markets work yeah. now. Yeah. Well, at the same time I'm doing that professionally, I've got three kids at home that are growing up. And I'm talking to them about money Love and, it. and I'm a market geek. I'm addicted to it. And yes. so I'm always talking about companies. Okay. I'm always talking about companies. Yeah. And so if we're standing in line for burritos, I'm like, wow, man, they're selling a lot of burritos. Don't you wish you owned this place? Or mm. you know, if we're grocery shopping, I'm talking about, you know, don't, don't buy it off the end cap. Let's go down the aisle. They, you know, they're, they're marketing to us. They want us to see that on the end cap. We're That's probably right. getting ripped off. We yeah. Go, we'll make sure that uh -huh. there's not a better deal. So I love it. always thinking about stuff like that and telling my kids about it. Sure. And then along the way, I also challenged them to save their money because like most humans, they uh, struggled to not spend everything that they had in their hands. Mm -hmm. And so I challenged them to save. And along the way, I said, you know what? I'm going to match if you can save $500. Good. And by the time they matched it, it took them a while. It took them a few years. I, it, I bait and switched him into, oh, that match is going to be into some stocks that you have to pick yourself. And we're going to talk about that. Love it. And so... I'm also telling people about that on social media and, and people know this, Hey, he's talked to his kids about stocks and he's in the business. And then one day I'm talking to Dave Baldwin and we're talking about how careers sometimes change when it's not on our time frame. You sometimes lose your jobs when you're not expecting it. Right. And I'd said, you know, if that happens to me, I want to do something around financial education. I feel like there needs to be something that makes it easier to teach people how to teach their kids. Um, without using a bunch of jargon and making it more complicated than it needs to be. Yes. And I don't know whether to love him or hate him for it, but Dave says, well, you should write a book. Yes. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> maybe I'll do that. And, and so I started doing that. I started writing the book after that. Shout out, Dave. That's, that's <laughs> a great decision, actually. I think that's amazing. And I mean, it, you know, it's a much easier resource than, than some others, right? You can walk around on social media or whatever and say, hey, here's this tip or, you know, whatever. But now you've actually got this book this, you know, this physical book that you can go back and use as a resource. So, uh, how in depth does it get? So I, it gets more in depth than people realize they're being taken. And that's what I'm trying to do is take them, you know, really into a college level, uh, analysis course, but make you feel like you're reading a mom or a dad book. Mm -hmm. And so I use analogies. I start out with just stories of how I talk to my kids, things as simple as, you know, watching Shark Tank together. And, you know, here's some of the things you can think about while you're watching Shark Tank. Sure. Uh, you know, the, the, I talked about the savings challenge and things like that. Mm -hmm. But then as I, I transition into what I call the back half of the book, where I start to walk them through, here's, you know, here's the markets, but here is an example of a lemonade stand. Let's imagine you own a lemonade stand and you have a friend in the neighborhood that's your partner and you're making X amount of dollars this summer and someone wants to buy that lemonade stand for you. Well, mm -hmm. How much are they going to pay you for that? So I walk through kind of that story, but alongside it, I put Apple Computer and their story. And I start to sneak their numbers into it. You know, they sell, you know, this is their sales. Yeah. And I try to make this parallel to compare the lemonade stand to Apple Computer. Yeah. So that by the time they're through that story, they feel like I know what earnings mean. I know what a PE ratio is, but I never said PE ratio and all of that. I just walk them through. Here's how much you might sell your lemonade stand for. How are they going to value that? Well, they're going to look at your sales. And if your sales are a thousand dollars, maybe they'll offer you 2000. Mm -hmm. They're going to put a multiple on that. Yeah. And I just walk them through that and then back into it. Like, oh, by the way, that's actually the PE ratio of a stock. Sure. And try to make it simple to follow along and, and like I'm just sitting there talking to you. Yeah. That's, that's been the goal is just to make it easy to consume and, and let parents, teachers realize, one, you may know more than you realize. Yeah. And two, if you don't, let's catch you up without making you feel like you have to take a finance course. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you've got some good testimonials as well. Some folks who have actually practiced uh, what you taught. Yeah, it's, we, we do. We've got, it's been great. We've had great reviews. We've had people that have, you know, from teenagers and even younger than that, that have taken it and run with it and started investing, started saving. Uh, it's, it's been, uh, I, I'm just, 
incredibly humbly proud. Yeah, <laughs> that, the beautiful that, man. Um, and, and even to the extent that we've had re reviews in Amazon where they say, hey, this has been used for such and such, and I've not able to, been able to track down to thank them or ask them about it. So, wow. Um, Very cool. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, and it's available, Amazon, uh, Barnes & Noble, uh, anywhere Pretty else. much anywhere you buy books online. Okay, you, you got a it. great voice. You got to do the audio book. <laughs> <laughs> you should do the audio book, man. So back to the basics, pros and cons of investing. What, what, you know, what do you tell people who are, you know, they say, I just want to do things my way. I'm not interested in that. How do you get them, you know, awake to, yeah. to realize, you know, what the, what the upside is? Yeah, so it you know it, it's always personal, and I just try to you know tell folks you can do it on your own, and there's nothing wrong with that. You are empowered to, to do that, and uh, what we want you to do is to to you know to take it into your own hands. To me, there's there's two steps. The first step, and whether it's kids or adults, the first step is just being able to save and helping people you know get to that first step of all right, I'm going to spend less than I have available to me, and Reality is if you get that one thing right, all the rest of the finance lessons, they work themselves out. But you just got to get that one down where yeah. I can I can not spend everything in my possession. You do that, set some money aside, gives you that 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 cushion. You start to get that cushion that if something goes wrong, we know we're going to have bad luck. We know we're going to have those rainy days. Mm -hmm. you know, let's be prepared for them. If we know it's going to happen, mm -hmm. should, shouldn't we shouldn't we prepare for it? If we know it's going to rain, shouldn't we have an umbrella somewhere in right. the house? So right. um, that's that first step. And then the second step is just helping people understand the power of growth when you, when you do put a little bit of money aside. Mm -hmm. um, and whatever you can do, you, you get that first step. If that first step is, all right, I, I'm just going to put $20 a month aside. I right, get in the habit of that. And eventually, you, know, you get people to see the power of what that $20, $50, $100, $200 a month can do when it starts to grow. Mm -hmm. And especially with the young people, uh, I teach teenagers, I teach young adults, then I have, you know, when, you know, the entire gamut from, you know, age 10 to, to 80 that I'm talking to. And a lot of times it's, it's the same conversations, but I really try to tell the young people is 60 years old seems forever away. Uh -huh. And if you're telling a 20 year old, Hey, save for retirement, they yeah. might listen to you, but they're probably not going to. Yeah. But I'll try to put my story into why it's so important to save a little bit early in your twenties. Um, me take you to when I was writing the book. I'm getting done writing the book and mm -hmm. I'm getting to the point where all right, I need to start doing the pre marketing before I, I publish. Sure. And I worked for an investment company that you know, it's a regulated industry. And so I went to management and said, Here's my idea. Uh, it's going to be really cool. I can't wait to do it. Uh, but you need to know from a compliance perspective that I'm doing, I got need to get some level of permission. And they said, Oh, that's going to be complicated for us. That's you can't do that. I hear that a lot in your field. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm sitting there, well, I, I want to do this. So I, I don't know that I was really asking for permission. I think I was telling you I was doing this. And right. so my initial reaction was just, oh, okay. Uh, a few weeks go by and I think to myself, you know, I've been saving since I was in my 20s. I've okay. been investing. I've, you know, I've done all the right things so Now's that I can live life on my terms. I don't know what's next, but I think I want to publish this book without without anybody handcuffs yeah without having to say to any compliance department here's what i'm going to do and so i quit without yeah. knowing what was next i couldn't have done that if i hadn't saved my money in my 20s and 30s i love it i love I'd have been story. tied to that job i'd have been stuck yeah that's an amazing story and and that's like one of those forks in the roads that we talk about on this show a lot you know making those decisions and being in a position to allow yourself to make that decision right and and um you know you, you still went back and started your own thing again. Um, and even that in itself is a big decision, right? Figuring out how I can go out on my own as opposed to working for, you know, these larger corporations or whatever. But um, to stop just to publish the book and, like you said, knowing that you had been saving since your 20s, it, it all paid off for you. It's working. It's working the way it's supposed to. Hi, I'm Jeff Fox, founder of Star Fox Media. We're a digital marketing and video production company that focuses on serving small businesses here in Vista, California. We have the team and all of the equipment necessary to produce, film, edit, and distribute your podcast to as many people as possible. For more information, you can reach out to us via email at info at starfox.media or give us a call 
at 760-385-3117. Let Star Fox Media help you tell your brand story today. The Film Hub is the future of co-working right in downtown Vista. Get energized to go to a safe work environment that is clean and sanitized. Create video content, live stream events, and all of your marketing material in our audio and video facility. Come and visit us at thefilmhubinc.com. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I think my point that I try to make to the young people is that I'm not 60 and retired, mm-hmm. but if I hadn't planned for when I was 60 and retired and saved when I was 20, as if I, that money was going to be there, then I couldn't have made this change. So it's not always about retirement. It's about flexibility when you're, maybe when you're younger. No, it's funny because I actually had a misconception when I was young. And I used to always say, ah, I'll be retired by the time I'm 60, right? Um, but it didn't involve saving or anything. What it really involved was I got to get this big chunk of change, then I can retire. As soon as I have that chunk, I'm shutting everything down, right? But that's a misconception. It, it, it makes more sense to save and build up to getting that, not hitting the jackpot. Because if you just a person who didn't have money and you hit the jackpot, you're probably going to spend all of that (laughs) because it's the jackpot. You know, we're used to having it anyway. So, um, yeah, that, that when you talk about retirement, that's what immediately came to my head. I just remember being a teenager talking about how soon I was going to retire. Oh, I'm retiring. No problem. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Are you prepared for it? (laughs) That's the question. (laughs) Right. And that's what you teach. And, And so that also brings me to, uh, something else that I was thinking, uh, while you were talking about, you know, you being an educator, you know, the way that you are, um, it seems to be a passion of yours, uh, as opposed to, Hey, you know what? I've got this formula. I know how to save my money. I know how to gain my own wealth. Why don't I just take off? <laughs> Why am I telling all of you guys? So what, what is it that's keeping you from, or, or that, that keeps you inspired to keep giving that information? Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's, it's seeing that it can change people's lives and mm-hmm. just seeing the power that um, you know, one kid that figures out, Oh, if I save up a little bit of money instead of spending it all, then maybe I'm not in a bad relationship or, or mm. you know, it, money affects all parts of our lives. And wow. so, and also feeling like, like I've been blessed with an ability to help make some confusing things less confusing and, you know, thankful for that and want to share that. I love it. And it's, um, it is a passion of mine. I just, I feel like, um, I've been so fortunate to have had people that taught it to me, uh, that I I just really want to, want to pay that forward as much as I can. And there's a a thirst for it. Good. Seeing so quickly how people just, they, they, they want the information and, um, yeah, it's, uh, it just makes me want to, want to help them. I love it. I love it. Um, I, I noticed on uh, one of your websites, it said, um, no one strategy fits everyone. Um, <clears throat> so how hard is it to customize strategies uh, for people when not one fits, uh, fits all? Yeah. And that's a really good question. And it kind of goes to how financial professionals do make things more complicated than they need to be a lot of times. Okay. And It's pretty simple to do stuff on your own if you know a few things, but you got to know those few things. And there's a lot of bad information out there. But I would always equate to the people I grew up around. So going back to small town Kansas, Mm -hmm. the best investors that I was around growing up were the wives of farmers. Okay. And 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 it's you know I'm I'm generalizing. Most of the farmers were men, and most of the wives you know is women. Got it. it Um, but they would take the money and they'd go down to the bank and they might buy stocks in the utility company or buy stocks in some local thing that they knew about. Mm-hmm. And they'd get the certificates and they'd you know, either put them in a safe deposit box or they'd take them home. And those were the best investors because what they do, they would buy something, they'd leave it alone and almost forget that they had it. Sure. And didn't know anything special, just knew that I need to put some of this money aside and these are businesses that I understand. And that's, that was it. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that that's, Hey, that's a strategy for everybody, Yeah, but you can be extraordinarily successful without knowing what you're doing by just putting money into the market a little bit at a time mm-hmm. for a long time. And I'd say that a lot of the wealth in this country has been created by people putting money into their 401k plans, not really know what they're doing 
getting a match on it. But because they didn't know what they're doing, they didn't try to outsmart themselves. Mm -hmm. They just left it alone. <laughs> and then 25 years later, they're like, oh my goodness, I've got a, I've got hundreds of thousands of dollars love here. It. I love it. Um, they didn't know anything special. And so um, that's a pretty good plan for most people. Now you, you can get more creative and you can have different strategies and, and we can, you know, we can definitely make it more complicated, but I've found that complication doesn't always increase returns. And then oftentimes it, it actually, it reduces returns. It just mm -hmm. makes people feel better about it. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the room with a really smart guy, so that <laughs> they don't pay. And uh, even if I lost money, then it doesn't matter. But um, no, it, it's um, you know you spoke on on your website also a lot about goals, and and I was talked about goals at the beginning of the show. You know, there, there's really some good parallels there. Some people who may not know exactly what it is that where they want to end up. And then there are other people who have a goal and you might have to find some sort of complicated approach in order to help them get there. Right. And whether aggressive or not aggressive, I mean, there's, there's so many little nuances, right. To the conversations that you're having with your customer. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's all about trying to figure out how can I think like them as much as possible mm -hmm. and what are they trying to accomplish? Yeah. And like you, you said, even if you don't quite know what it is you're trying to do, help them feel like they're still stepping towards whatever it is and that you know, it may, maybe it has to materialize over time. For sure. example, you know, if you're thinking about retirement, I put myself in this. I, you know, I don't, I don't want to retire. I'm, I'm having time of my life. Love it. Uh, when, you know, when might that be? I don't know, but I'm still you know, moving towards, you know, building to where I, I could, if I wanted to, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe that's not the best example, but to some people, you know, they don't know where they want to stay here or move. They're not quite sure what it is. Mm -hmm. Like, well, it doesn't matter. You're going to need to sell to build your cushion up regardless. And so just helping people, you know, sometimes you got to take that first step, even if you're not quite sure where, where sure. you're headed. Yeah. I, and I like what you're saying too. I mean, because, and actually you hear these terms a lot, financially stable, financially free, like you said, building that cushion up. Um, I guess it, it, Everyone, the definition of that is different for each person, right? What is financially f financial freedom to you? You know what I mean? For sure. So, uh, I, and I guess, like you said, you kind of have to get in their head a little bit and help them define what that is, what that looks like. Absolutely. You just help them visualize it. Maybe it's a, maybe they haven't done that yet. And maybe that's maybe you're adding value just through that process. Yeah. So, um, what you also mentioned having the time of your life, which I appreciate. Um, because a lot of what this show is all about is the balance of business and pleasure. Right. Uh, and I, I was checking you out on social media. I see you, you seem to be a hot sauce connoisseur, yeah. <laughs> a foodie at the very least. Um, <laughs> so tell us about your passions. Are you a musician as well? I, I see, uh, at least you, you I, are I, into I music. I have some, I'm a big into music. I, um, I can fake my way through some stuff on the guitar, but okay. if, if you, I'm certainly not a musician on it. Okay. Um, but a huge music fan. And, um, yeah, I, I love living in Southern California because I can, I can go hiking and then go surfing on the same day. And it's, that's uh, beautiful, man. That that's a great endorsement that that's very important too. And to be able to do that as a business owner, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's one of those things that we kind of preach here is, is that balance, you know, so many people stressing themselves out, just working the, you know, fingers to the bone. Um, but you know, there, there is something to having some freedom there as well, you know, and some control over your own uh, life and lifestyle. Yeah. And, and you make a good segue to, um, you know, balance. I'm not very good at that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I tend to run too hard at one thing and burn out and I run too hard the other way. And so as I was realizing that I was going to have to make the career change to, to publish the book, I was, you know, I, I was, I was scared to death. Okay. I was just scared to death. Yeah. But I was also realizing I'm not going to not do it. Like I'm scared to death, but I'm doing it anyway. Yes. And I also know about myself that I tend to get myself out of balance. And so right before I quit my job, I tattooed fear nothing on my left forearm and I tattooed a scale on my right forearm. Okay. Just to remind myself that, hey, you're not very good at these two things. So focus on them. Great. Well, I mean, not that I'm endorsing tattoos, but I think <laughs> I think you're sending yourself the right message and, and you you reminding yourself as well. Now, get me back to the hot sauces. Right. <laughs> <laughs> What's this all about? Yeah, it's kind of this, it's turned into this bit of a goofy thing on Twitter. But mm -hmm. um, 
I mean, we've got so many hot sauces in our refrigerator. <laughs> my my daughter's a uh, freshman high school, and she loves hot sauces just like I do. And okay. so we've just always looking for new ones. Mm -hmm. And um, so, are you going high on the what do they call it, the Scoville level? Level? Yeah, I've I've got a pretty high threshold for pain, and can still can still taste the flavor to, to the level that in in college, my uh, um, my roommate he had the uh, the staff of the mexican restaurant we always went to he speaks spanish i didn't bring out the hottest sauce that they'd ever yeah. made and i and, and we were eating it and i took it home and cooked with it oh no <laughs> oh no yeah that's a high threshold for pain. you take shots of that while you're getting right. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool man I, uh before we get out of here i do want to talk a little bit about um work you're doing in the nonprofit sector as well you, you tell us a little bit about that yeah absolutely so um with the, the book and everything associated with it, the classes that I do, we're in the process of setting up a nonprofit around that. So all of the book sales will go into that nonprofit. It's going to be called the Financial Literacy Exchange. And we just want to be a resource for our local community to, to help financial education in, in whatever form it might take. The mm -hmm. first steps are we're going to be doing some classes for some uh, women coming out of uh, Addic addiction and uh, abusive relationships. Wow. And, and so stuff like that. Um, not exactly sure what direction all of it's going to go because we're still in the formation stages, but um, want all of that education stuff to, to go into, into that one, that one thing. It's amazing. It's great work. I mean, you know, if you're an educator, you want to educate everybody clearly. And, and so, um, and, and uh, again, with the nonprofit sector, that, that's always an important piece for me as well. Uh, I work with a lot of nonprofit I, uh, profits. I insure a lot of nonprofits and I always like to see them out there doing great work. So an educator and yourself, that's great. And then uh, working in the nonprofit sector as well. So uh, I'm, I'm really happy for you, man. Congratulations. Well, I appreciate it. And I'm going to need insurance for I got my you. nonprofit. So. I got you. <laughs> 100%. 100 Let's give some uh, contact information. Uh, you guys can go into the archives of a podcast that JJ has done uh, from Piggy Banks to Wall Street on uh, Apple and Spotify and Overcast, uh, wherever you get your podcast. As well, um, go to the website, teachingkidstobuystocks.com. Also on Instagram at teaching kids to buy stocks and on Twitter stocks is spelled differently at teach kids stocks S T O X. Also find him at winrichwealth.com. That's W E N R I C H wealth.com. Got it? Did I get it right? You nailed it. All right, man. Thanks so much again for joining us. I really enjoyed this, man. This is good information for everyone. Appreciate it, Zeke. Really enjoyed it myself. All right. Same Business Different Day. Thank you for listening to Same Business Different Day. We truly appreciate your support. Please like, subscribe, and leave a nice comment on all platforms. It really helps our show. The Same Business Different Day podcast is produced by A Different Day Radio, Star Fox Media, and James Russell. This was a production of A Different Day Radio.